She is a Tomb Raider and a Heartbreaker, a charming spy and a witch who wants to make the world a little better instead of capturing it. Today, we will talk about all the ups and downs in the life of the world famous Angelina Jolie. Was she a troubled teenager and a wild child? What made Angie become a goodwill ambassador? And is it true that she had her own blood wedding? You are on the Biographer channel. Get comfortable. It will be interesting. Angelina Jolie Voigt was born on June 4, 1975 in Los Angeles, California to actors John Voigt and Marceline Bertrand. She became the couple's second child. Her birth made John happier than the Oscar nomination and all the successful films in which he played at that moment. He recalled four-hour-old Angelina. You don't remember it, but when you emerged from your mother's womb, I picked you up, held you in my hand, and looked at your face. You had your finger by the side of your cheek, and you looked very, very wise, like my old best friend. Her godparents are also actors, Jacqueline Bissett and Maximilian Schell. Young Angelina's uncle is singer-songwriter Chip Taylor, and probably with such a family, it was difficult to become someone other than an actor, because her brother James Haven, who is two years older than Angelina, also chose an acting career. Uncle Barry Voigt is the only one who is not associated with acting. He's a famous geologist and volcanologist. Angelina has German and Slovak ancestry on her father's side, while her mother was of French-Canadian descent. At a later age, Jolie said that she was of Iroquois origin. But no matter how much the couple wanted to save the marriage with the birth of a second child, their marriage got worse. Although it would be correct to say that Marceline wanted to return her husband, who was famous for his betrayals. When Angelina was one year old, the actor was already infatuated with Stacey Pickren, the young co-star in the drama Coming Home. After the divorce in 1976, John received his first Oscar, while Angie and her brother lived with their mother, who was forced to abandon her acting career to focus on raising her children. Jolie's mother raised her as a Catholic, but did not require her to go to church. She grew up as a liberated child, and recalled in one interview, I was a member of a group called the Kissy Girls. I was very sexual in kindergarten. I created a game where I would kiss the boys and give them cooties. Then we would make out and we would take our clothes off. I got in a lot of trouble. As a child, Angelina often watched films with her mother. It was that, and not her father's successful career, that aroused her interest in acting. The father spent time with the children, but when Jolie was six years old, Bertrand and her partner, filmmaker Bill Day, took the family to Palisades, New York. At that time, they saw each other only when John came to the premieres and took the children to the set. Angelina liked it so much that she began to dress up in her mother's clothes and do makeup, staging performances at home, and brother James acted as a cameraman. Probably because of this, young Jolie was lucky enough to appear on the big screen for the first time. In 1980, her father organized his daughter's debut in a cameo role in the film Looking to Get Out. John wrote the script for the project, so five-year-old Angelina and his ex-wife appeared there. A lot of sirens like that in New York City. Noise all the time. That's why they have the tall buildings in New York City. <laughs> Daddy goes there all the time. Daddy goes there, huh? Your daddy's a... He's a nice man. You are too. Surprisingly, the family was reunited on the screen, but the film was released only after two years. The explosive character of Angie showed in those years. She didn't get along with pets. Once in her rock and roll life period, the actress admitted how terrible she was as a child. Once she took her hamster to the shower, it fell ill and died. But there were other poor fellows. I had a dog and I ended up beating him and he got sick and I've hurt so many. I'm just not a good animal person. I had a rabbit that died too. A cage fell on him. Then she got a lizard named Vladimir and a Harry Dean Stanton snake named after the actor, popular in the 70s. Her first fan love was Mr. Spock. A couple of years later, the family returned to Los Angeles, and Jolie already knew that she wanted to build an acting career. Over time, dressing up and being an actress suddenly bored her, so she quit acting and aspired to become a funeral director, attending embalming courses at home. She was impressed by her grandfather's funeral, where she was surprised by the crowd of upset guests. Angie saw the funeral as a glorification of a person's life rather than a gloomy farewell. I'm not scared of death, which makes people think I'm dark, when in fact, I'm positive. 
At the time, Angie went to Beverly Hills High School, where she felt rather lonely amongst the children of wealthy families in the area because her mother had a more modest income. Other students teased Jolie for being very thin and wearing glasses and suspenders. She studied at that school for only two years. Early attempts to become a model at the urging of her mother were unsuccessful. Soon, Angelina went to Moreno High School, an alternative school with non-traditional curricula and methods. Such schools offer a wide range of philosophies and teaching methods for teachers and students dissatisfied with any aspect of traditional education. Angie became a punk outsider, as she described herself. She wore all black clothes, just black dresses, sweaters, and makeup, took part in moshing, and flirted with a knife with her boyfriend neighbor. Why does she have such an interest in knives? Once a little Angelina was at a renaissance festival, and there was a wide variety of knives. It's kind of like that. And, then, and who do you do to stare at the chair? <laughs> really? Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> She found something really beautiful and traditional in them, because different countries have different weapons and blades. So, she began to collect knives and weapons from early childhood. Subsequently, this interest will play an awful joke on Jolie. Once, after careless use, an ambulance saved Angelina's life. Within a couple of months, Angelina was in the psychotherapist's office. She was diagnosed with a tendency to social psychopathy. Jolie graduated from high school and planned to return to theater classes. Later, in 2004, she recalled that period, stating, I am still at heart, and always will be, just a punk kid with tattoos. Marceline wanted to protect her daughter from destructiveness, so Angelina went to the Lee Strasberg Theater Institute, where her mother once studied. Lee Strasberg was a cult director and acting teacher who taught such Hollywood legends as James Dean, Paul Newman, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, and his favorite, Marilyn Monroe. Angelina studied the basics of acting for two years and participated in several productions, but considering that she did not have enough experience to play according to the Stanislavski system, the actress left the educational institution. A lot of real things in my life too. I wish I had one real thing in my life too, but I don't. And I'm fine, aren't I? I'm just fine. In the same period, Jolie met a guy who was two years older. It seemed to be nothing but serious. But Angie was 14, and he was 16. She brought him into the house and called her chosen one, and soon they began a stormy sex life. Marceline allowed the couple to live together at their house, as she understood that the prohibitions would provoke Angelina to look for another way out, and the girls could run away from home. The mother did not want to spoil the relationship, but she tried to control her suddenly grown-up daughter. At 16 years old, Angie broke up with a guy and improved her relations with her father. He became a full-fledged mentor for her. She planned to return to acting in theater, but first briefly resumed her modeling career. The first photo shoot brought the actress a small surge in popularity. She also starred in a few short films for her brother, who entered the University of Southern California School of Cinematic Arts. Soon, Jolie moved to New York, known to everyone as the capital of fashion, rented a flat, and freed herself from her mother's supervision. She began to receive more commercial offers. Angelina starred in several music videos for Lenny Kravitz. The Lemonheads, and Meatloaf. She also participated in the first short films of her new New York friends. Thanks to this, Angelina, an aspiring actress without a portfolio, was lucky, and soon the doors of the cinema for 17-year-old Jolie will open. Of course, success did not come immediately. In 1992, the actress got her first role in the sci-fi sequel Cyborg 2. The original film with Jean-Claude Van Damme was extremely successful, but neither actor nor director Albert Pyun wanted to work on a sequel. Michael Schroeder was invited to shoot the second part, and Jolie, not knowing anything about the director, was happy to star in her first full-fledged Hollywood project. Schroeder, at that time, was already known as a B-movie director. In the story, Jolie is a sexy cyborg killer who escapes from the laboratory and rebels against her creators after it turns out that they have a plan to use her as a suicide bomber and destroy her. In parallel, she falls in love with her martial arts teacher, played by Elias Curtius. It sounds strange enough already. The picture is replete with outdated special effects, poor staging of scenes, and ridiculous acting. Angie was excited to be in the film, but when she saw the final result, she was disappointed. After I saw it, I went home and got sick. I saw it and I threw up. Just nausea. But the kickboxing was fun. It was the first time I was sent to do kickboxing. But I was 17 and I think I thought I was making a real movie, which is odd, since there's a scene when I'm decapitated and talking. As one does. 
But, yeah, I saw it and got really sick. So, in 2001, in an interview with the New York Times, the actress recalled the film. According to Angelina, her brother, Jamie Haven, calmed her down and said, It's gonna be alright. After that, she did not go to the auditions for another year. The studio soon decided to cover up its failure and canceled the cinematic release. The picture was released only on VHS, and even then, not separately, but only as an addition to the original. But no matter how unsuccessfully everything turned out, it was the first work in which Angelina abandoned her father's surname and replaced it with her middle name. Thanks to that, the world has come to know Angelina Jolie. Who they claim the thief is? You, handsome. What do we do now? Run like hell. Mental health problems at that time did not disappear. She still struggled with insomnia and an eating disorder. And by the age of 20, Angelina was using almost every possible illicit substance that causes addiction. She had episodes of depression and tried to commit suicide twice. The first time shortly after the film's release, at 19 years old. Angelina returned to the film set in 1995. The actress appeared in the background in the low-budget thriller without evidence. But a more significant return was the lead role in the crime thriller Hackers, directed by Ian Softly. It was Jolie's first major studio film, taking into account that Cyborg 2 never came out. They spent $20 million on filmmaking. The project partner was the talented Brighton Johnny Lee Miller, who had just participated at Train Spotting. But against his background, critics noticed the better acting of Angelina. It was a breakthrough for her. That's a nice score for a girl. Think you can do better? I'll give it a shot. Preparation for filming lasted three weeks and included trips to real hacker lairs, where the actors saw how servers were hacked. And in the film itself, computer hacking was shown using real shots. The director considered that the graphics would make the scene not natural. The actors went rollerblading together and met computer geniuses such as Tristan Lewis, Kevin Mitnick, and Nicholas Jarecki. And even Quentin Tarantino was considered for one of the roles. As a result, an affair began between Miller and Angelina Jolie on the set. That is why their joint film scenes look especially believable. However, after filming, the actress abandoned her relationship with Johnny. He decided Angie needed to be wooed and pursued her everywhere for a long time. Interestingly, MGM created a site for the film with information about the actors, and it was hacked before the film premiere by a group called Internet Liberation Front. But even such troubles did not help hackers to gross the box office, and the picture failed. Over time, the film has become a classic, Jolie, however, reacted to a failure not as sharply as before and no longer refused to audition. The next project was the romantic comedy Love is All There Is, a retelling of the story of Romeo and Juliet, the events of which take place in the Bronx. It was one of two Romeo and Juliet film adaptations released in 1996. The second was the picture of Baz Luhrmann, which brought the popularity of Leo DiCaprio to a new level. In Love is All There Is, Angelina played her first comedy role, and it didn't turn out so badly. But critics were still unhappy with her. So, Ma, can I drop you or what? No, no, no. It's not far. I'll walk. Okay. But it was not the only project of the actress that year. Soon, Jolie appeared in the road movie Mojave Moon, which has little to say, but the teen drama Foxfire, based on the Joyce Carol Oates novel Foxfire Confessions of a Girl Gang, allowed the actress to show herself. She got the role of independent and wayward Margaret Legs Sadovsky. The story follows the coming of age of four teenage friends who go through the difficulties of first love and disappointment together. Angie's character united girls against a teacher who sexually harassed them. According to the actress, she's used to completely giving herself to the characters. Therefore, she really became related to the rude rebel girl in jeans and a leather jacket. Jack Matthews of the Los Angeles Times praised the actress's performance, writing that it took a lot of hogwash to develop this character, but Jolie, John Voight's knockout daughter, has the presence to overcome the stereotype. If I hear any more shit about 60 aspirins or one more of your fucking mood swings, I'm going to tickle you to death. Do you understand me? Huh? <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. Because of that, Angelina did not notice during the filming that she fell in love with her partner on the set, Ginny Shimizu, who played the role of Goldie. Ginny is an open lesbian and 10 years later claimed that there was a short romance between them. 
One way or another, after a few months, Angelina got back together with Johnny Miller, which interrupted the spread of rumors about her love. Don't worry, you're not my type. Oh? What's this? Everything was serious, and the actors even decided to get married. But there was no big white wedding, but a modest dark one. The only guests were her mother and one of the groom's friends. She wore black rubber pants and a t-shirt with Miller's name written in Jolie's blood. And instead of rings, the couple pierced their fingers and took a blood oath of eternal love. The actress told the New York Times about it. It's your husband. You're about to marry him. You can sacrifice a little to make it really special. It was the first marriage for both actors. She was 20 and he was 22. When they proposed to each other, both had questions to ask. Since Miller was going to stay in Britain and Jolie in Los Angeles, Angelina did not want to remain engaged for a long time. Then they decided to organize a quick wedding. However, the period of the couple's eternal love was not happy and will not last long. A rough patch began in Jolie's life from the moment of the so-called black wedding. Further, Angelina got an offer to star in the dramatic crime thriller directed by Andy Wilson, playing God. The actress's partner on the set was David Duchovny, who was gaining popularity. He was on a wave of success after The X-Files, and this was his first lead role in the film, but director Andy Wilson prevented actors from doing their best. The picture began to be shot back in 1995, but the public did not appreciate the test screenings, so they were at a loss. There were convoluted narratives and plot holes. Such a film could not be released, and it was sent to pre-shooting, which lasted two years. The studio was poised to fail at the box office, and the extra footage had overrun the budget, and now the fees were supposed to be at the $12 million spend. As a result, the studio decided to lure viewers into the cinema halls with frank nudity and filmed two erotic scenes with Julian Duchovny. The film trailer consisted almost entirely of these shots. However, these scenes were cut from the film itself. Later, Angie, who filmed these scenes apparently for the director's personal archive, confirmed it. There's your fee right there. 10000 Ray, I didn't do it for the money. Oh, shit. You can imagine the dissatisfaction of the audience and critics who went to one film and got a completely different one. Naturally, they showered playing God with negative reviews. It's a pity for David, who lost his successful ratings. According to him, acting in that film was a mistake because the film did not even have a complete script. During the same period, there was discord in the actress's personal life. Angelina divorced Lee Miller after a year of marriage, and even though they managed to maintain friendly relations, it added to a series of failures from failed works. The actress again plunged into depression, was going to quit acting, and sought solace in addictive substances. Angelina was lucky to get an opportunity to star in a video for the Rolling Stones where the actress walked in front of New Yorkers in a rather outrageous manner. It was perhaps the most noticeable Jolie's clip. The song was quite successful, and even more with the video, entering the top 20 hits of the year. The actress decided to interrupt the series of failed projects. It was time to change something, and she agreed to a role in the miniseries for CBS True Women. Angelina portrayed the image of the rebellious and wayward Georgia, Virginia Losh Woods. The character suited the actress, and it was the first project where Julie was not sexualized. She wore long, closed dresses and a variety of hairstyles. Critics' reviews were mixed. For example, Robert Strauss of the Philadelphia Inquirer called her horrid, a fourth-rate Scarlett O'Hara who relied on gnashed teeth and overly pouted lips. At the same time, many praised the actress. But Angelina found even greater success by playing in the biographical miniseries George Wallace. She played the role of Georgia's second wife and then Alabama's first lady, Cornelia Wallace. Honey. No. No. You were great. There's nothing left you need to prove. They know who George Wallace is. The miniseries told about the scandalous governor of Alabama, who was assassinated and covered the topic of racism in the 50s to 70s. Jolie's partners on the set were Gary Sinise, known for his roles in Forrest Gump and Apollo 13, and the talented director John Frankenheimer. They helped Angelina Jolie reveal her acting potential and took her to the next level. The series was well received by critics and won several awards, among which there was a place for Jolie. 
She got Cable Ace Award and Emmy Awards nominations for Best Supporting Actress in a Miniseries or a Movie and Golden Globe Awards for Best Supporting Actress. It seemed that there was no rough patch in Angelina's life. The producers immediately reacted to such success and immediately invited Angie to HBO. The channel has always been famous for its premium content and has been an alternative to cinemas. Jolie was to star in the biographical drama Gia, where she was supposed to portray supermodel Gia Garangi. The famous model had the same bad habits as the actress, but if Angie finally cleaned up her act, they destroyed Gia's life and rapid career. The actress was frightened by such a similarity, so she turned down the role for a long time. Gia has enough similarities to me that I figured this would either be a purge of all my demons or it was really going to mess with me. The actress, nevertheless, decided to fight her demons and agreed to the role. While preparing for the role, Angelina talked with Gia's relatives and plunged into her diary entries which formed the script's basis. Taking advantage of Strasberg's acting method, Jolie chose to stay in character between scenes throughout filming. She was alone with herself and did not even communicate with her family. The result was stunning. The image on the screen turned out so real that it led viewers and critics to delight and horror at the same time. Jolie gained wide recognition for her role as the titular Gia, and it's easy to see why. Jolie is fierce in her portrayal, filling the part with nerve, charm, and desperation, and her role in this film is quite possibly the most beautiful train wreck ever filmed. For the second year in a row, Angelina took the Golden Globe Award and was nominated for an Emmy Award. In addition, the actress also won a Screen Actors Guild Award. It was a real breakthrough, and today it's funny to watch those emotions of a growing star. My family, uh, who I love so much, and Mom, I know you wanted to be an actress, and you gave it up to raise me, and thank you, and Jamie, my brother, I love you so much, and I have nothing. You're just, you're my... Upon the end of filming, Angie was exhausted and briefly retired from acting. She felt she had nothing more to give to the audience and moved to New York, where she began taking evening classes in directing and screenwriting at New York University. For the last scenes of Gia, the actress was forced to shave her head, and after filming, it helped her to blend in with the crowd. But as soon as pleasant reviews from critics began to come in awarding the George Wallace and Gia awards, including hers, Angelina returned to acting. It was true that during that time there was a failure. The film Hell's Kitchen with a $6 million budget, directed by Tony Cintrapini. The film was not noticed on the first weekend and grossed only $4,500 at the box office. But its creators quickly realized that a failure was coming and, without waiting for reviews from critics, canceled the rental. The film was released on DVD and thereby saved Jolie's reputation. The actress at that time received a huge amount of offers, so Jolie's next role was in the comedy drama film Playing by Heart. She was lucky enough to meet on the screen with such stars as Gillian Anderson, Ellen Burstyn, Sean Connery, and others. Critics once again praised the film, but spoke particularly well of Jolie's performance. Peter Stack of the San Francisco Chronicle wrote, Jolie, working through an overwritten part, is a sensation as the desperate club crawler learning truths about what she's willing to gamble. So the actress won the Breakthrough Performance Award from the National Board of Review. Director Mike Newell, who assembled the ensemble cast for the comedy drama Pushing 10, noted her success and invited Angelina to complete the quartet of John Cusick, Billy Bob Thornton, and Kate Blanchett. The actress agreed and soon played the role of the wife Billy Bob Thornton's character. Who would have thought then that this would have consequences? Probably this person was the manager of both actors, who at one time did not want to introduce them, fearing that they would converge. Thornton has been married, divorced, and recently engaged to Laura Dern. During filming, Angie and Billy Bob bonded while playing a married couple. They began to spend a lot of time together and went to dinner together. But no one noticed any connection except for friendly communication. They looked like a couple, but the film producer thought it was good acting on camera. And they whirl and they twirl and they tango. However, the film received mixed reviews from the public and critics because of the script and ridiculous characters. According to critics, the film was an utterly ridiculous piece by the writer about a free-spirited woman who mourns dying hibiscus plants, wears many turquoise rings, and becomes very lonely when her husband is not at home. Angelina was criticized in part because it was difficult to find her fault. The film had a good start at the box office, but the fees quickly stopped at over $8 million. With $33 million spent on it, it was a failure. Despite the setback, in the next couple of years, Jolie was in great demand and changed from one set to another. Her next project was the crime thriller The Bone Collector. Directed by Philip Noyce and Denzel Washington became a colleague in the film, 
It was an adaptation of the Jeffrey Deaver novel of the same name, where she played the role of a police officer forced to help a paraplegic detective hunt down a serial killer. You were a model. Yeah, when I was a kid. Kid model, a street cop. As a leap. Inspired by the success of Fincher's Seven, Universal Pictures copied that film. The genre has become more popular than ever and probably helped the mediocre to the bone collector gross $150 million at the box office. Audiences and critics gave the film mixed reviews, but it was still Angelina's first box office success. The second work of the actress, released in the same 1999, was the psychological drama Girl, Interrupted. They began work on the film almost seven years before, when the young and talented Winona Ryder read the memoirs of the writer Susanna Kaysen and dreamed of playing in the film adaptation. But then, the Columbia Pictures studio, which had the rights, was in no hurry to invest in the project. Winona personally got the approval for the film adaptation, persuaded the studio, and after five years of rewriting the script and searching for a director, the film was finally approved and sent to production. Winona Ryder personally chose James Mangold as a director. The casting was crazy, yet the story was in place. The casting of Lisa Rowe, a charismatic, manipulative, rebellious, and rude sociopath, was interesting. She was a kind of female Jack Nicholson. James Mangold chose between Claire Danes, Courtney Love, and Angelina Jolie. But after he met with Angie, the issue was immediately closed. She sat down and she was Lisa. I felt like the luckiest guy on earth. Her power is volcanic. It's huge. It's electric. In addition to Winona Ryder in the lead role, Angelina's partners on the set were such excellent actors as Whoopi Goldberg, Elizabeth Moss, Vanessa Redgrave, Jared Leto and others. The four-month filming took place in a real working Harrisburg State Psychiatric Hospital. The location was chosen for its old-fashioned appearance, where even an old pharmacy was preserved, which gave the film a look appropriate for that time. The actress got used to the role and shunned people on the set, like her character. She never communicated with Winona Ryder outside the shot. It affected Angelina's mental health. Can I bum one? Go ahead. At the end of filming, she was exhausted and had a nervous breakdown. The actors went to the UCLA Medical Center's psychiatric ward for three days. Alas, despite years of Winona Ryder's efforts, the film failed at the box office because of its $40 million budget and the subject it raised. Critics gave mixed reviews. The book's author, Susanna Kaysen, criticized the film, accusing Mangold of adding melodramatic nonsense to the story making up plot points that weren't in the book, such as Lisa and Susanna running away together. The author was delighted only with the performance of Angelina. However, critics also praised the actresses who shouldered a mediocre script. The worst thing for Winona was at the end of this story, when the film was presented at the Oscars in only one category. The Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for Angelina Jolie. And she won it. So, for her role, Angie received the third Golden Globe Award, the second Screen Actors Guild Award, and from the very first nomination, she took the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. It was, perhaps, the peak of Jolie's success and fame. I'm surprised nobody's ever fainted up here. Oh, I'm, I'm in shock, and I'm so in love with my brother right now. <laughs> he just held me and said he loved me, and I know he's so happy for me. And, um, thank you for that. A happy moment was spoiled by one trick by Angelina after the ceremony. There she gave an interview holding her brother by the hand and did not get tired of repeating how she loves him and that this is the best man in her life. The public had nothing against it, but the next day the tabloids were full of photos where the actress was kissing James hard on the lips. Jo Lee tried to explain that with such a gesture she showed love and everything else was false speculation by the press, but the journalists have got an unpleasant aftertaste. The 2000 year was especially eventful and brought many pleasant and unexpected events to Angelina. Angie first appeared in her first summer blockbuster, Gone in 60 Seconds. The film was directed by Dominic Senna and starred Nicolas Cage, who was supposed to steal 50 cars in exchange for his brother's life. It was a script they gave me that was nothing but Ferreris, Nick Cage, and Giovanni Ribisi. And that sounded like a good idea. It's a fun movie, and I tried just to have fun. After serious roles, it was an outlet for the actress. She got the role of the beauty Sway, a mechanic who was once the girlfriend of Cage's character. She was trained in extreme driving by stunt car enthusiast Bobby Orr. Car hacking and Dominic Senna took care of the nonstop action in the shot. 
And besides Ferrari, there were enough interesting cars in the film. Aston Martin DB1, Cadillac Eldorado, Chevrolet Bel Air Convertible, Dodge Viper Coupe GTS, Lamborghini Diablo SE30, and others. And although the film starred as many as three Academy Award winners, Jolie, Cage, and Robert Duvall, the film could not go beyond a fun blockbuster and become a serious drama. Critics were negative about the week's script and awarded the film with mixed reviews. It grossed $237 million at the box office, but due to high production costs and a starting budget of almost $100 million, it was a doubtful success. The studio lost a lot of money on the project. Service department's over there. Can I talk to you? Well, Jolie soon became a member of the scandal in the media. It happened on the set of the erotic thriller film Original Sin. Antonio Banderas was her partner on the set. The thing was that Angelina agreed to act in explicit sex scenes, provided that she was naked, and Antonio supported the idea. As a result, the footage was so explicit that director Michael Christopher had to cut out all the hot scenes. Having learned that, the journalists spread the news that Angelina Jolie and Antonio Banderas had real sex in the shot. The press printed article after article about the secret romance between the actors. Even Banderas' wife, Melanie Griffith, couldn't avoid being asked about it. But any doubts that Melanie Griffith might have had about explicit sex scenes between her husband and Angelina on the set were quickly dispelled when Jolie confirmed her relationship with Billy Bob Thornton, already familiar to the public. Despite the cut shots, the film still turned out to be quite frank. Many viewers considered the scene almost erotic pornography. The film failed at the box office, and Jolie was nominated for the Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Actress. Not the worst at all. Only not what I was expecting. If my deception has altered your intentions, and if you are not satisfied in any way... No, 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 it isn't that. I am determined to make my way back to my home in Delaware. But she was already of little interest because personal relationships again came to the fore. The actress was part of a love triangle between Billy Bob Thornton and his fiancée, Laura Dern. While Dern was filming, Thornton left their house without explanation and began avoiding her. The next thing she found out was that her fiancé had married Jolie. I left her home to work on a movie, and while I was away, my boyfriend got married, and I've never heard from him again. It's like a sudden death. For no one has there been any closure or clarity. Although Laura Dern and Angelina Jolie's paths never crossed during their love triangle, they spent some time together as children. Both actresses are children of Hollywood stars. Laura's father, Bruce Stern, once recalled that he worked on the set with Angelina's father a few years ago. John Voigt's a friend of mine, so I remember Laura babysat one night for Angelina when Angelina was two and Laura was about eight, because John and I were doing Coming Home. They stayed at director Hal Ashby's house. Both were on set, so they asked Laura to look after Angie since she was the eldest. On May 5th, 2000, the couple had a wedding which did not differ much in scope from the previous one. The $200 wedding ceremony was in a small church in Las Vegas, and witnesses were the only guests. There were questions about the four times married Thornton, but the couple was sure of their sincere and long love. Billy claimed that in five years, their marriage would be just as strong. Thornton is not only an actor, but also a talented musician. He dedicated a song to Angelina after the wedding. Something changed that day inside me. The newlyweds were not shy about their relationship and were the most outrageous couple in Hollywood. They got tattoos of each other's names, often appeared together on the red carpet holding hands, and wore vials of each other's blood around their necks. It caused a strong reaction in the media, but Billy said years later that it was not as crazy as people wrote about it. The necklaces were a very simple thing. Hey, let's poke our fingers with a pen and smear a little blood on there, and when we're away from each other we'll wear the necklace. It was that easy but by the time it came out in the press, it sounded like we were wearing a bucket of blood around our necks. It is worth noting that although journalists increasingly wrote about Jolie, the actress's projects became more significant and Angelina still didn't have world fame. But, as we have already said, the year was really favorable to the actress, and she got into a project that could destroy or increase Jolie's career success. Angelina got the lead role in the film adaptation of the popular Tomb Raider video game series, the action-adventure Lara Croft Tomb Raider. The development was carried out by several countries at once, the USA, the UK, Japan, and Germany. Simon West directed the multinational project. He insisted on the candidacy of Jolie for the role. According to him, the actress was an exact copy of Lara Croft. 
Angie was not particularly happy with such a resemblance and did not share the exaggerated sexuality of the character. Moreover, her ex-husband Johnny Lee Miller often played the game when they were together. The director did not deviate from Angelina's candidacy and promised her that in addition to external similarity, her character would be revealed in the film. She would try many new activities. It would help the actress to show herself from a new side. Finally, when Simon West told her about the film locations, Angelina agreed. She dreamed of visiting different parts of the world and decided not to miss the opportunity to visit Iceland, England, and Cambodia. In addition, the actress's father, John Voigt, who played the role of Richard Croft, Lara's father, also starred in the film. The director thought of taking the actress's father to the role of the father of the character, but he doubted it because he did not know about their attitude. Angelina liked the idea and insisted on her father's candidacy. As a result, there was chemistry between them on screen. It's a very special thing because our relationship is very, very similar to these two people. They have similar loves. They have a similar sense of adventure and want to set things right. Curious about life, curious about the past. Today, training before filming is standard practice for many actors, but Angie has experienced it for the first time. The actress spent a lot of physical training, learned to fight and shoot, and did yoga. Those activities helped her feel calmer than ever before. She said she hadn't been to the gym in years, but the project helped her get in shape. Interestingly, Angelina is left-handed, and the directors had to assemble a pistol, especially for her, convenient for reloading and firing with her left hand. She learned how to rotate pistols and inspired her father. And here I see my daughter standing on a column that's been broken down. Take her guns out and flip them in the air and throws them into the holster. Whoa! Doesn't anybody realize how unbelievable is it? The shooting lasted half a year, and Angelina performed many of the stunts without the help of stunt women. But in one of the first shooting scenes where Lara hung on a beam at home, the actress fell and sprained her ankle. The crew had to wait two weeks for Angie to recover and be able to reshoot the scene. And to protect the actress from repeated accidents, Angelina hired Eunice Huthert. The British stunt woman has already replaced the actress in her previous picture. Their work eventually became a real friendship, and Eunice still replaces Angelina. While on the Lara Croft Tomb Raider set, Huthart was annoyed by Jolie's stubbornness. She had recently recovered from her injury and immediately climbed to shoot at a height without safety cables. And in the episode of the trip through the jungle, Jolie's car did not have a roof, so snakes got into it. But as we know, Angelina got along well with them, so she insisted on performing the scene without the help of Huthart. Jolie's character was antagonized by Daniel Craig, who played the role of an ex-acquaintance, a rival treasure hunter. It's funny that Daniel, being British, played an American, and American Angelina played British Lara Croft. By the way, if you're interested in learning about the life of the famous British intelligent agent James Bond or the charismatic detective Benoit Blanc, write in the comments. We'd love to tell you about the ups and downs of Daniel Craig's career. But despite the effort and the $115 million budget, the film didn't get the credit it deserved. Critics were mostly dissatisfied, and Angelina again was nominated for the Worst Actress Golden Raspberry Award. The only saving grace was that it was a film adaptation of a popular game, and the audience warmly accepted the film, which helped the film gross about $275 million at the box office. At the time, it was the record for an action film starring a woman. The box office success guaranteed the film a sequel. Many souvenirs and toys were sold worldwide, and theme parks dedicated to Tomb Raider began to appear. The largest and most famous park was opened in Italy. The film became a cult and finally, in 2001, brought the actress worldwide fame. The number of fans grew every day. But the most important change that occurred during that period in the life of the actress happened inside her. Angelina rethought many things around and looked at the world in a new way. Having visited Cambodia, she learned about the horrors of the civil war that unfolded there from 1967 to 1975. And although the war at that time ended more than 20 years ago, many residents still felt its heavy trace on themselves. More than 40,000 innocent people were affected by anti-personnel mine explosions. Children stepped on unexploded shells day after day, and Jolie was shocked by that because she had never encountered anything like this in peaceful Hollywood. And returning home from filming there, she could not stop thinking about it. And I, 
I don't want to talk about it. And I asked her what, what, it, what would have happened to him or what's happened to him or what could be done. And um, f found out that he, they said he was probably just going to die because, because of the reality of how many people were in that situation. And it was my first experience. And I thought, well, we should fly him out of here. We should do something. We should get him hospital care. And, and you know, realizing that this is one kid in thousands. And you can't. Upon returning home, Julie contacted the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees for information on hotspots worldwide. Then, she decided that she wanted to know more about the conditions in those areas, and from that moment, she began to visit refugee camps worldwide. In February 2001, Angelina made her first 18-day mission to Sierra Leone in Tanzania. She was shocked by what she saw. Later, Julie returned to Cambodia for two weeks and met with Afghan refugees in Pakistan. The actress responded to the UN's emergency call and donated $1 million. It was the largest donation the UN has ever received from a single individual. Angelina herself covered all the expenses associated with the missions, and during the trips, she lived in the same modest conditions as everyone else. And although she understood that it was impossible to help everyone, she was worried about the fate of each child and wanted to help everyone. As a result, on August 27th of that year in Geneva, Jolie was appointed UNHCR Goodwill Ambassador. We want to talk about this in detail later. But for now... After the resounding success of Laura Croft, Angelina appeared in the romantic comedy Life or Something Like It, where, according to the plot, her character, Lainey Kerrigan, a TV reporter, finds out that she will die soon and is in search of the meaning of life. The actress was imbued with the role because serious changes also took place in her life. The film again turned out to be a box office failure and, with a budget of $40 million, collected only 17. And, according to tradition, Jolie was nominated for another Golden Raspberry. But by the time the film was released, the actress was already busy. She wanted to become a mother. I, I just, since I can remember, I always, uh, I never, well, like most people, I didn't know if I'd ever be a mother, be a good mother. I was nervous. You weren't uh, sure if you'd be a good mother? I don't know. No, yeah, of course. I thought when I was younger, I thought, oh, God, I couldn't be somebody's mother. But when she returned, impressed by traveling with the UN mission, Angie wanted to help at least one child, or rather one specific, named Maddox. Angelina liked the baby so much that she adopted him instead of having her biological child. A good friend of the actress and her former Cambodian business partner, Sarath Moon, recalled, as far as I understand from her, when she visited the orphanage and saw Maddox, he smiled at her and got up. Instead of crying like all the other babies, he was smiling right at her. It touched her heart. That's why she chose Maddox. Billy Bob Thornton supported her idea and was not opposed to adoption. However, there were some legal difficulties because at that time, there was a serious problem with child trafficking in Cambodia. Sarath Moon helped Angelina with the adoption. There are a lot of children in the world that need good care, need a better life. By that time, she wanted to be a mother but thought it was better to be a mother to some baby who desperately needs good care. He initially became the Cambodian father of the baby. The actress waited three months for the American court decision until she could adopt Maddox. Only in December 2001 in Namibia, where the new shooting of the actress took place, the boy was able to reunite with his new family. In Namibia, Angelina starred in the romantic drama Beyond Borders, directed by Martin Campbell. The film seemed to the actress an ideal project because she portrayed on the screen a volunteer who was to go to hotspots. The picture reflected Jolie's interest in humanitarian aid. Filming took place in Canada, Thailand, and Namibia. We're shooting with the uh, local people who are from the Laisu Hill Tribe and who are actually refugees from 200 years ago from China. Never see something like this in her life. <laughs> Not. Really, she thinks it's really fun to watch. Mm. Yeah. So today she's not going to work now, she's going to watch. <laughs> Clive Owen became a partner in the project. Although Catherine Zeta-Jones and Kevin Costner were originally chosen for the lead roles, and despite another box office failure, low critical acclaim, and winning the Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Actress, Angelina Jolie conveyed to audiences the value of her actions and support for refugees worldwide. 
and for the film's premiere, the actress released a memoir, Notes from My Travels, a collection of daily entries about her real-life experience as a goodwill ambassador for the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. Also during that period, the sequel to the acclaimed film adaptation at Lara Croft Tomb Raider, The Cradle of Life, was released. Jean de Bont was responsible for the production. The Korn Band released a video for the song, Did My Time. in which Angelina also appeared as a film promo. Filming took place in Greece, Wales, Kenya, and even Hong Kong. Gerald Butler played the role of the antagonist. The film budget was reduced to $95 million, but at the box office, the picture was unsuccessful and grossed only $160 million. Paramount blamed the failure of the unsuccessful sequel to the game Angel of Darkness, which was released raw and buggy. Critics, on the contrary, liked the second part more than the first. They found it much more confident and entertaining. Well, Angie took the Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Actress for the second time. The seriousness of this award is somewhere on the level of Cookie Monster from Sesame Street. They regularly do something similar to attract attention, so the actress was not upset and had not reacted to such failures for a long time. Meanwhile, Angelina's personal life was still more interesting than on the set. The couple, Jolie and Thornton, divorced after three months after the adoption of the son. Although the actor supported his wife and would repeat those words in subsequent interviews, he was still not ready for fatherhood. We just had different lifestyles. Hers is a global lifestyle and mine is an agoraphobic lifestyle. So that's really, that's the only reason we're probably not still together, maybe. There was a different path in life we wanted to take. Angelina received full custody of her son and removed the tattoo with Billy's name from her arm. From that moment on, the former rebel Angie disappeared forever because the new Angelina Jolie was a caring mother and goodwill ambassador. She wanted to make the world a better place and soon moved to live in England. In addition, the actress refused to star in the sequel to Tomb Raider and was free for a while. There, Jolie settled down to live in the house where, a few years ago, Stanley Kubrick filmed his last film, Eyes Wide Shut. In England, the actress could enjoy complete freedom from annoying reporters and paparazzi, so she spent all her free time in charitable assistance to the UN. Soon, the number of the actress's projects reached a peak, and in 2004, she released four films at once. She first starred in the sci-fi action-adventure Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow, Carrie Conran's directorial debut. Jolie joined the all-star cast with Gwyneth Paltrow, Jude Law, Giovanni Ribisi, and Michael Gammon. The project was prepared for 10 years, however, the film was shot in just three weeks, and the shooting of Angelina's scenes took three days. She got the role of Francesca Frankie Cook, the commander of a Royal Navy flying aircraft carrier. Jolie had just arrived from filming Tomb Raider The Cradle of Life, and despite her small role, spent hours consulting with fighter pilots to learn their jargon and get a feel for the character. What is that? You be nice. The self-taught director got the opportunity to make the film thanks to producer John Avnet, who stumbled upon Conran's short film and decided to turn it into a feature-length film. Paramount Pictures took over the project, and Conran got a $70 million budget. Post-production and special effects took a year, and when the film was released, it buried the director's career. He failed, collecting $58 million and bringing the studio a huge loss. The second film of that time was the psychological thriller Taking Lives, directed by DJ Caruso. The film was based on the novel of the same name by Michael Pye. The casting lasted almost two years, but as a result, the lead roles still went to Jolie and Ethan Hawke. The actress played the role of an FBI agent who hunts a serial killer. You know the cop? In a way, yes. I'm Special Agent Eliana Scott. Probably the journalists, wanting some rumors, remembered that the actress was not married and began to look for some connection between Angie and Ethan Hawke. A year later, the actor divorced Uma Thurman. But what did Angelina, who had her own busy life, have to do with this? Immediately after the film, the actress starred in another one directed by Oliver Stone, Alexander. The film was a historical drama about the life of the great commander and king, Alexander the Great. The acting ensemble gathered very well. The film stars Colin Farrell, Val Kilmer, Jared Leto, Rosario Dawson, Anthony Hopkins, and others. Angelina played the role of Queen Olympias, 
the imperious wife of the king, the fan of snakes, and the mother of Alexander. It's funny, but she was not good for him as a mother because she was only a year older than Colin Farrell. Beware most of all of those closest to you. They are like snakes and can be turned. General Carreras. Several film cuts were released, including a director's cut, which was considered an improvement to the original one. But this did not save it from negative reviews. Critics treated the film cruelly, like ancient Greek rulers. They crushed the plot, Stone's direction, and the acting of many actors. Inaccurate historical events and chaotic battle scenes caused most questions. As a result, the film received as many as six nominations at the Golden Raspberry Awards in 2005. One of them in the worst actress category was Julie. Fortunately, it all ended on the nominations. The box office also ended quickly, and the $167.3 million at the box office was not enough to cover a whopping $155 million budget. The last project of 2004 for Julie was the first successful film in a long time. After all, it was animated and was much less likely to fail. It's about the comedy cartoon Shark Tale, the roles of which were voiced by Will Smith, Robert De Niro, Renee Zellweger, Jack Black, and Martin Scorsese. Angelina played the role of Lola, a seductive lionfish in which the main character, Oscar, is romantically interested. The character really suited the actress. The cartoon was full of funny jokes and references, including the work process where, for example, Robert De Niro worked in the usual duet with Scorsese, only now he could also command him. I've been waiting. Uh, <laughs> look, uh, I don't have a lot of time for the whole hand clappy, making the lights go off, music playing in the dark thing. You know. The critics didn't appreciate the cartoon, but it grossed the box office. It prompted Angelina to take on another comedy project, which did not portend great difficulties. Nobody knew that Angie would create the difficulty in it herself. It was with the help of others. If you have not guessed what we're talking about, then we are talking about the action comedy film Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Director Doug Lyman was supposed to direct a remake of the 1996 series of the same name. He invited Nicole Kidman and Johnny Depp to play the lead roles, however they both dropped the project. First Depp, who was replaced by Brad Pitt, and later Kidman, who was harder to replace. They were looking to the actress for longer. Pitt did not wait and left the project. Soon, Angelina Jolie was cast for the role of Mrs. Smith. Brad was satisfied with the choice. He remained in the project and the studio was able to start filming. But Brad had to recognize his filming schedule. It was impossible to shoot two films at once and he was forced to suspend shooting in Mr. and Mrs. Smith for three months right in the middle of the process to participate in the already approved Ocean's 12. Both Pitt and Julie received $20 million each for participation in the project. In August 2004, filming resumed and the actors were happy about that. No one guessed the matter at that time, but they found understanding and some connection. Every scene looked like it was made for them, and that showdown in the house is considered the sexiest shootout scene in cinema. It's funny that the film actually included much more explicit scenes with them, but the director was forced to cut all the erotic moments to get around the rating restrictions and make the film more box office. It helped and the film grossed $487.3 million at the box office, which was a record in Julie's career. But as we said, the most difficult thing for the actress during the filming was not to faint because it seems she fell in love with Pitt. And Brad was rumored to be not indifferent to her. Of course, they could not just confess to each other and start a relationship because at that time, Brad Pitt was married to Jennifer Aniston. He had to regularly answer reporters that he and Angelina were just friends. But after a couple of months, Jennifer Aniston filed for divorce. Due to unresolvable differences, the couple divorced. And soon, Pitt began to appear in public already with Angie. The fans were shocked and tons of negativity poured into the media against Angelina, who was called the destroyer of family ties. The actress tolerated all that and even got some pleasure from answering questions about her and Brad. The only thing she categorically refused to admit was Pitt's betrayal of Jennifer. According to her, there was nothing between them while the actor was married, and everything that was written in the media was just rumored. All right, let's go. Personal questions, which I abhor. Did Angelina Jolie break up your marriage? No. I you... handled this like a game show. <laughs> no. Everyone says she's a homewrecker. It's a good story. You know, I've been in these tablets for 14 years now. 
At some point, you just become the Zen master. Perhaps somewhere inside, Angelina still remembered her father's act and decided not to repeat it. Later, the couple began an official relationship and went on vacation to Kenya. There, Angie decided to adopt the second child, Zahara Marley, and the couple became parents. And sometime later, Brad also officially became the father of Maddox. There were still a lot of projects in the actress's career, but in the interval between them, she still managed to devote time to her family, deal with issues of humanitarian assistance, and travel with the UN mission to various countries. In 2006, she appeared in the Robert De Niro spy film The Good Shepherd, which also starred Matt Damon, Alec Baldwin, Joe Pesci, and again, Michael Gambon. Angelina played the role of Margaret Clover Russell Wilson, the wife of a CIA officer played by Damon. The film, which took nearly 10 years to develop, received mediocre reviews. By the way, on the film set, the press found out about Jolie's pregnancy, but for now, the actress was involved in two more productions. The first was from her favorite director, Robert Zemeckis, in the innovative fantasy Beowulf. The film was shot using new motion capture technology which James Cameron had not yet managed to bring to the ideal in Avatar. Paramount's studio allocated a budget of $150 million to the project, such stars as Ray Winstone, Anthony Hopkins, John Malkovich, and Brendan Gleeson agreed to participate. Your story would live on when everything now alive is dust. Zemeckis drew inspiration from the visual effects of Beowulf from his experience with the animated film The Polar Express, remembered by many for the uncanny valley effect. At that time, the characters looked like plastic figures that were difficult to empathize with, so the director set the goal of achieving realism. The plot was based on an ancient Germanic pagan epic, a poem Jolie had read. She got the role of the antagonist, the mother of Grindel, played by Crispin Glover. The actress recalled her first impression of the character. I was told I was going to be a lizard. Then I was brought into a room with Bob and a bunch of pictures and examples, and he showed me this picture of a woman half-painted gold and then a lizard. And I've got kids, and I thought, that's great, that's so bizarre. I'm going to be this crazy reptilian person and creature. Angelina was filmed for two days, being three months pregnant. It was probably the reason for replacing her body with the body of a stunt woman model in the film. In May of that year, Angelina and Brad began preparing for childbirth and went to Namibia to raise public awareness of the problem of the third world. There, they planned to wait for the birth of their daughter. The government provided the actors with complete confidentiality and did not let curious journalists into the country without the agreement of Brangelina. No, this is not the name of the newborn child, but the nickname media and the public called the couple. By the way, the couple arranged an auction among publications for the right to be the first to do a photo of their child. People magazine paid over $4 million, a photo of a daughter named Shiloh Jolie Pitt, who was born on May 27th was placed on the cover, and all the money was immediately transferred to charity. A few months later, Angie went to film A Mighty Heart, a drama based on Marianne Pearl's memoir about the kidnapping and gruesome murder of Wall Street Journal reporter Daniel Pearl. The film was produced by Brad Pitt, the production studio Plan B Entertainment, founded by him at the beginning of the decade together with Jennifer Aniston, remained with Pitt after their divorce. Later, he would have a hand in releasing many successful films. Before production officially began, director Michael Winterbottom, lead actor Dan Futterman, and a small crew traveled to Karachi for 10 days to film in real locations. But soon, they were forbidden to do this, and part of the filming had to be done in India, in the Mumbai vicinity, thereby replacing Pakistan. The casting for the lead role raised some questions, but the choice of Jolie was defended by the author of the original source. I have heard some criticism about her casting, but it is not about the color of your skin, it's about who you are. I asked her to play the role, even though she's way more beautiful than I am, because I felt a real kinship to her. She put her whole heart into it, and I think she understood why we should do this movie. We had something to say that we knew we should say together. In the film, Jolie almost single-handedly fought against the terrorist regime and impressed both critics and Marianne Pearl. The role got the actress a few Best Actress nominations, including the Golden Globe Awards and the Screen Actress Guild Award. Unfortunately, she did not win a single award. In January 2007, Angelina's success was overshadowed by sad news. Her mother, Marceline Bertrand, after an eight-year battle with ovarian and breast cancer, died at the age of 56. Marceline died at Cedars-Sinai Medical Center. Angelina and James were present. 
According to Jolie, her mother has been raising children all her life and practically did not have her own life. Everything was only for children. For the actress, it was a hard blow. My grandmother also died young, so my mother always thought it could happen to her. However, James reconciled with his father after six years of disagreement, and Angie decided to take a break from the movies and devote more time to her family. A few months later, Angelina adopted a three-year-old Pakistan boy from Vietnam. From that time, their family consisted of two boys and two girls. Continuing to raise the pressuring issues of humanitarian problems, Angelina made her debut as a director, and in the spring of that year, she released the documentary A Place in Time. The film consisted of a couple of dozen visited countries worldwide and, in addition to Angie, Anna Hathaway, Jude Law, Colin Farrell, Johnny Lee Miller, and other actresses' friends took part in it. And in April of that year, Angelina began to work on the action movie Wanted. Despite the troubles in life, the actress had to continue shooting in projects already signed with her. It was the adaptation of the comic book of the same name. James McAvoy and Morgan Freeman became partners in the project and the actress herself played the role of an experienced member of the Brotherhood. Sorry about that. After several commercially unsuccessful films, Angelina finally played in the first profitable project after Mr. and Mrs. Smith. The film was filled with various special effects and spectacular shots, which allowed it to collect $342.5 million at the box office. However, it is possible that all this would not have happened if Angie had not taken the project into her own hands. The actress agreed to act if she could change the filming process. Angelina pointed out the moments that did not suit her in the text, and the scriptwriters tweaked her image and even the final scene, thanks to which the film received positive reviews from critics, praising the well-played Angie's character. And although she had much fewer projects during that period, Angelina became the highest paid actress in 2008, earning an average of $20 million per film. The next project also released that year was the mystery crime drama film Changeling, directed by Clint Eastwood. The film plot was based on a true story in 1928 about the kidnapping of Christine Collins' nine-year-old son when the police returned the wrong child to Christine. She told the police about this, but they only accused Christine of being a bad mother and making fun of the police. She was placed in the psychiatric department of Los Angeles County Hospital, but after a while, Christine still managed to defend her case in court. The screenwriter, J. Michael Straczynski, was overwhelmed by such a story and spent 10 years researching and writing the script. I'm going to report a missing child. <clears throat> missing child. What's your relation to the child, ma'am? Clint Eastwood was hooked by the story, so he began work on the project and wanted to see Jolie in a lead role. The director was sure that only a real mother could fully feel the pain of losing a child. Angelina, in turn, on the contrary, did not want to face the pain of loss again even on the screen. At first, she said she didn't want to get involved with the project because it was too upsetting. But then she couldn't stop talking about Christine. She's just a woman who I came through reading her story and reading articles about her and came to admire. As a result, critics liked the film and it was met with applause at the Cannes Film Festival, but did not receive the Golden Palm there. Critics probably did not believe such a story could actually happen to the film's character. The film received many different nominations, including an Oscar nomination for the lead actress for Angelina Jolie, and a win in a similar nomination at the 2008 African American Film Critics Association Awards. But the actress could not act in such hard films and roles. In her next project was the cartoon Kung Fu Panda. Based on an ancient Chinese epic, the cartoon tells the story of a clumsy panda named Po who dreams of becoming a Kung Fu master. Angelina was excited to make something fun for kids. She got the role of the Master Tigress, the serious and tough tigress, leader of the Furious Five. This one for her, which is very nice for me, she has a bit of an emotional breakthrough and learns to be a little nicer. Tigress, go! The hardcore do understand. It's one of the films that I'm absolutely the most proud of. I think it is beautifully done. Kung Fu Panda became extremely successful. Critics praised it. The audience was delighted, and the cartoon grossed over $631 million. Soon, the creators announced the forthcoming continuation of the picture. Looking ahead in the next 10 years, the cartoon came out with two sequels, several spin-offs, and a fourth cartoon in the works. It is probably not worth talking about how successful the project was in 2008. You actually thought you could learn to do a full split in one night? It takes years to develop one's flexibility, and years longer 
to apply it in combat. When the cartoon premiered, Angelina admitted on the red carpet that she was pregnant again. On July 12th, Brangelina gave birth to twins, a boy named Knox Leon and a girl named Vivian Marshalline. Their first photos were again auctioned off to people for a record $14 million. The couple donated most of the money to charity. Half of the amount immediately went to help the victims of New Orleans from Hurricane Katrina in 2005, the second half to Jolie and Pitt's charitable foundation. Children are an important part of Angelina's life. She devotes enough time to children affected in various hotspots, but much more time she spends on raising her children. Each time to the question of journalists, is Angelina ready to become a mother again? She answered something like, yes, we'll see. And so, there were six of them of different ages with different needs and interests. It seems that raising six children is not so easy but Angie's older children help her in raising the younger ones. They're not really stunned anymore when kids come home. They're, they're uh, you know, mad, mad. Somebody asked me how Mad was doing, and he's, you know, he's just, he's like the professional big brother. He's done it so many times, and um, we prepared them. We talked to, uh, to them about it. They knew it was coming, and, and they're just all at that great age that they aren't threatened, that they are independent enough to not need mommy and daddy all the time, and to be able to enjoy the kids. They play with them. They change their diapers. They... They call them their babies and they dress them up. And Jolie admitted in an interview that she and Pitt wake up like parents. Parents of children from all over the world whose backgrounds were very similar to those of street children. She and Brad wake up as mom and dad who want to make sure they are raising their kids with good values. Parents who want children to see all parts of the earth. Want them to be responsible, but also be able to enjoy their lives and the privileges they have. Not to be ashamed, but to accept them. And if they can give children a better education and at the same time not spoil their personal lives, then do it. I feel like I was always kind of looking for purpose when I was younger. And I always wanted something wild and something just full of... Now my life is so full and so loud and so chaos in my house. And the most beautiful chaos that there's these lovely little people. Angelina in her childhood saw an example of a beautiful mother caring and kind. She sacrificed everything for the sake of her children. I will never be as good a mother as she was. I will try my best, but I don't think I could ever be. She was, she was just grace incarnate. She was the most generous, loving. She's better than me. <laughs> Despite such a large family, Angelina did not spend all her time at home. In 2010, the actress starred in the action thriller film Salt which told the story of an undercover agent, Evelyn Salt, who was trying to clear her name. The film was originally intended for Tom Cruise, but the script was rewritten for Jolie. It may seem strange, but it still seems to be Tom with good makeup. After all, Angie insisted on doing all the stunt scenes herself, not in front of a green background. She climbed steep surfaces, jumped, rode a fast motorcycle, and ran quite a lot, but maybe not as fast as Tom. Director Philip Noyce, who worked with Angelina at the start of her career, wanted to shoot the scene in which Salt walks on the wall in the pavilion, but Jolie said, what are you talking about? I want to do it. As a result, after a month of preparations, the scene was filmed without Latigo, without a green screen, and she did it. Commercially, the film was successful, but critics showered the film with negative reviews for the superficiality of the film's theme and boring cliches about undercover agents. The same year, Angelina appeared in the film and again only after Cruz left the project. The actress didn't replace him in Mission Impossible. So far, it was just a romantic thriller called The Tourist. Johnny Depp got Cruz's character and Angelina played Charlize Theron's character. Oscar-winning director Florian Henkel von Donnersmark filmed the twisted spy story in Europe's most sophisticated locations. There were many locations, but they tried to shoot quickly since Depp had to return to the Pirates of the Caribbean filming. Jolie was glad to finally visit Venice. Where I come from, the highest compliment that they can offer a person is to say that they're down to earth. Grounded. I hate it. it. Drives me nuts. The film was released less than a year from the very beginning of the project. Critics were not thrilled and the box office success was saved by the European box office. The on-screen duo received Golden Globe nominations for Best Actor and Best Actress. Angelina decided to take a break from acting and take up directing seriously. 
Traveling as UNHCR Goodwill Ambassador to hotspots, the actress visited Bosnia and Herzegovina, where she saw the terrible consequences of the Yugoslav Wars from 1991 to 2001. Destruction and darkness inspired Julie to one idea. Soon, she wrote a script about a couple in love separated by the collapse of the state. The project was called In the Land of Blood and Honey. Angelina studied the history of events and interviewed dozens of witnesses, including the diplomat Richard Holdbrook, who participated in negotiations to end the war, and many reporters who covered the events, and the lead roles were played by Goran Kostic and Zana Marjanovic, who were victims of this terror. Angelina Jolie's first script didn't attract investors, and she invested $13 million in the project. She was not even looking for a director. I was asked if I wanted a director, and I always adamantly said no. And I meant it. <laughs> and, uh, and even when I was writing, I was writing kind of as a, as a secret side project because it was me trying to express mm. these things that are on my mind, but never intending to do anything with it. Um, her directing style was inspired by her work with Clint Eastwood and Michael Winterbottom. From the first, Angie tried to take calm on the set and trust the team. And from Winterbottom, she learned to work with actors, caring for their freedom. The film was shot in Serbian and English. The actress admitted in an interview that it was her best experience in cinema, and she liked working as a director. But it was a failure. Reviews from critics were mixed, and commercially it was the worst result in Jolie's career. The film grossed a little more than a million dollars. At the same time, Angelina decided to take several serious steps in her personal life. The first was a preventative double mastectomy, an operation that could save her from cancer that killed her mother. The genetic tests gave a high chance of Angelina developing a similar disease. Brad supported Angie, and soon after a successful operation, she even wrote an article in the New York Times in which she talked about all the stages of treatment and the importance of women's health. The second major step was the long-awaited engagement of the couple. Brad and Angelina have lived together since 2005 and already had six children, but did not want to tie the knot. The world learned about engagement only at the beginning of 2012. Pitt proposed before the premiere of In the Land of Blood and Honey, but the couple decided to give the film time, and Angelina was not in the best mood for such news. The actors didn't plan to get married until everyone in America got the chance, including same-sex marriage. But over time, their kids started asking questions about the wedding and asking them to get married. We've explained to them that our commitment when we decided to start a family was the greatest commitment you could possibly have. Once you have six children, you're committed. The wedding was planned, but it was not in a hurry. At first, Angelina decided to continue her directorial path. Her agent searched for dozens of scripts for her that couldn't get to work, and among them, she stumbled upon an idea she liked from the first page. It was a biographical war drama, Unbroken. The film is based on Luis Louis Zamparini's autobiography, Devil at My Heels. It tells about the fate of Zamparini, an Olympic athlete who, as an army officer, was a pilot in World War II and was taken prisoner by Japan, which he managed to survive. The project waited in Universal Studios for over 50 years, but when author Laura Hillenbrand wrote a new biography, it was resurrected. Angelina was invited to the post of director. For a conversation with studio producers, she prepared dozens of pages of storyboards and her vision of the film. Angie became director, but doubts remained after the previous failure. That is why experienced specialists surrounded her. Cullen Brothers rewrote the script and the talented Roger Deakins became a cameraman. They chose actors beginners for the credibility of what was happening. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Phil. I'm glad it's you. The role of a cruel antagonist went to the famous Japanese musician Miyavi, for whom it was his film debut. Jolie met Luis Lamborghini himself as soon as she was approved for the post of director. She went to visit him and found out that she had been living nearby for 10 years and even drove past his gate in the morning by car. About three months of filming in Australia with the most powerful team has paid off. The actors felt like participants in World War II. The film crew accumulated dozens of hours of material and Angelina literally had to delete those frames that were not needed in the film, even if she liked them so much. And in an interview, she admitted that she had never worked so hard on any project. It's been really, really challenging. Um, I didn't think, I didn't realize it when I was working on it and, and getting it together that it was, that it was the size and the complexity that it was. You know, I think it's a, it really is an amazing thing they allowed me to have this job because, because I've never done anything like this. Unfortunately, Luis was unable to attend the film premiere. 
Post-production took too long, and Angelina barely had time to show him a rough film cut two weeks before his death. The film turned out to be quite good, and despite mixed reviews from critics, it paid off at the box office, grossing $163.4 million. At the same time, with the premiere of Unbroken and its nomination for various awards, Angelina decided to return to acting and signed for the first time on a Disney Studio project. She had no idea that the project would become the most successful in her career and that after it, for many, she would be associated with it. The costly reimagining of another 1959 Disney fairy tale, Sleeping Beauty, was titled Maleficent. For the first time, it tells the story from the antagonist's point of view, showing her conflicted relationship with the king and princess of a corrupt kingdom. Angelina got the lead role, Maleficent, a powerful fairy of a magical forest kingdom. The actress was considered for the role when Tim Burton was supposed to be working on the project. But as a result, Oscar-winning Robert Stromberg, who previously worked as art director on such films as James Cameron's Avatar and Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland, took the director's chair. Jolie was a little embarrassed that according to the script, she should curse the child, but otherwise, she was delighted. I was really moved by the script from the first reading. It was like uncovering a great mystery. We all know the story of Sleeping Beauty, and we all know Maleficent and what happened at the christening because we've all grown up with that. But what we've never known is what happened before. Maleficent's costume was Angelina's idea. Initially, she was supposed to look franker, but for the children's fairy tale, they used the canonical image from the cartoon. The actress rehearsed a peculiar manner of speech for more than three months. She wanted her voice to be similar to the sorceress, which was voiced by Eleanor Audley in 1959. Go away. Go. Go away. Oh. I don't like children. Angelina's children also played in the film. Pax and Zahara appeared in the christening scene. They were scared of the sorceress, so they didn't have to reshoot. But Vivian Jolie Pitt appeared as a five-year-old, Aurora. Other children at the sight of the terrible makeup of the actress began to cry and be afraid. But Vivian understood that a loving mother was hiding under this image and cope with the role. For the first time in three and a half years, Jolie appeared on the screen where a sensation awaited her. In its opening weekend, Maleficent grossed almost $70 million in North America and over $100 million worldwide. The box office success of the picture was huge. The total fees reached the mark of $758.5 million, and the youngest ones were added to the number of Angelina Jolie's fans. And again, there were a lot of nominations, influence on popular culture, merch, and fan paraphernalia that flooded the stores. Angelina also starred in Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, which was received less warmly but was successful at the box office. The creators did not think a lot and decided to continue and announce the creation of a third film. The script for it has already been written and Angelina should start filming soon. But we have run too far. Let's return to 2014 because the long-awaited day for many has come. On August 23rd, a private wedding ceremony took place in the chapel of Chateau Maraval, the Jolie Pitt family estate in the French village of Corns. The ceremony was attended by about 20 of the closest guests and relatives, including children of the family. By the way, it was the children who wrote the marriage vows of their parents. And although the ceremony was private, over time, the Jolie Pitt traditionally sold photographs of the wedding ceremony at auction for $5 million. But legally, they legalized their relationship in California. The actress recalled, One day I was in the edit room and Brad was doing something and an assistant said, You have to sign some papers. Then someone said, The judge is outside. We both said, What do you mean, the judge is outside? The judge came in and at some point Brad said, shouldn't we be standing up? The judge said, no. Then suddenly we realized we were married in the most unceremonial way possible. The couple went on a honeymoon to the shores of Malta, but as it turned out over time, it was not quite a honeymoon. A happy family idol was replaced by Angelina's unexpected project. Her new director's film, By the Sea, is a romantic drama about a couple on the verge of divorce, which also stars Brad and Angelina. Jolie wrote the script in memory of her mother and even awarded the character with her last name. Angelina's pain and feelings were keenly felt in the picture, not least due to how beautifully it was shot. No, it would never hurt you. Stop, please. It's all right. Do Stop it. Stop it. Right. Get Stop. it over. Go on. I don't want to hurt you. Jeez. Just do it. Stop. Come on. Please, right. Stop. Do it. Stop. 
Neither critics nor the audience appreciated the pictures, but they had no idea that with that work, Angelina was trying to save her deteriorating relationship with Brad. As a result, the characters have become personifications of their authors. Many expected Brad and Angelina to repeat Mr. and Mrs. Smith, but received an art house, which in a year would lead the couple to divorce. They filed for divorce on September 20th, 2016, after their second wedding anniversary. The divorce process would take a very, very long time and would turn into a long court case over all the years of the property. The struggle for children and new challenges waited for Angelina. Before we get to this part of her biography, you can subscribe to our channel and click on the bell so you will be the first to know about new videos and help us develop. Don't let this headline deceive you. The film set is in Angelina's life to this day. In recent years, she has been filming more frequently and appeared in a supporting role in Brenda Chapman's fantasy drama, Come Away. Hi, Hi brother. Come on, darling. Let's keep going. Action thriller film, Those Who Wish Me Dead, directed by Taylor Sheridan. Let it out, buddy. She joined the superhero universe of Marvel Studios to play the strong and bright Thena warrior in Eternals. Her character can create any weapon from cosmic energy, and at the same time, suffers from a psychological condition called Maud Rory. Angelina practiced ballet and trained for a long time with various swords, spears, and staves for the role. You're Athena, goddess of war. <laughs> Thank you. For what? For always taking care of me. Oh. Oscar-winning director Chloe Zhao worked on the film. On set, Angie worked with Jimma Chan, Richard Madden, Barry Keoghan, Don Lee, Kit Harrington, and Salma Hayek. And the composer Ramin Jawadi, known for the soundtrack to Game of Thrones, was responsible for the music. But the film received mixed reviews and not the best ratings from the audience. But we learned that Angelina is an unsurpassed staring player. All right. I've been practicing for months. <laughs> nope, absolutely not. Cinema is, of course, good. But in this section, we wanted to say a little more about the charity work of Angelina Jolie. Since 2001, she has traveled to more than a dozen countries worldwide and sought to visit what she called forgotten emergencies, crises and the consequences of catastrophes deprived of media attention. She traveled to war zones more than once. For example, among them, Sudan's Darfur region during the Darfur conflict and the Syrian-Iraqi border during the Second Gulf War, where she met privately with U.S. troops and multinational forces. She also visited the Afghan capital of Kabul during the war in Afghanistan, where during her first visit, three aid workers were killed. In the spring of 2022, Angelina visited Ukraine in the midst of a full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine. In the Ukrainian city of Lviv, Angelina visited a medical facility where children affected by missile attacks are being treated, talked with volunteers and psychologists, orphans in a boarding school, and people evacuated from hotspots at the station. At the same time, right at the station, the actress was caught by an air raid alarm, so she was forced to flee to the nearest shelter. While I was in Lviv a few days ago, I was shown a special stone found by a little girl. The little girl who found it didn't realize the stone she was playing with was in fact a piece of shrapnel from a bomb. Sitting in the palm of your hand, it's jagged and heavier than you would expect. Its shine and unusual nature must have caught the child's eye. As it turned out later, the actress came on her own initiative, and the office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees had nothing to do with it. She is very brave to come to Ukraine in the first months of the war. To make her travels easier, back in 2004, Angelina began taking flying lessons to deliver humanitarian workers and food to hotspots worldwide. She received her pilot's license the same year and purchased Cirrus SR-22 and Cessna 208 caravan aircraft in 2014. It seems that the actress has much more in common with Tom Cruise, and it's time for him to get ready to move. Angelina has lobbied for humanitarian issues and promoted laws to protect and help foreign children, including the availability of education. As much as I would love to never have to visit Washington, that's the way to move the ball. She founded schools for girls in the countries she visited. She has led the UK government's campaign against sexual violence in conflict zones, and in general, she did other things that could not fit into the timing of one video. 
On April 17, 2012, after more than 10 years of service at UNHCR Goodwill Ambassador, Joe Lee was promoted to Special Envoy to High Commissioner Antonio Guterres, becoming the first to hold such a position in the organization. The duties of the new position now included representing Guterres and the organization at the diplomatic level with a particular focus on refugees. She made her first visit as Special Envoy just three months after visiting Ecuador, where she met with Colombian refugees. Later, Angelina also accompanied Guterres on a week-long tour of Jordan, Lebanon, Turkey, and Iraq to assess the plight of refugees from neighboring Syria. One of those trips inspired Angie's new directorial work, First, They Killed My Father, which told the story of the Cambodian genocide. So there was never a plan to, we should make this movie. It's just, I became a filmmaker and one day I thought, what story, what story do I feel is really important to tell? And I felt that this war that happened 40 years ago and, and what happened to these people was not uh, properly understood. And, and not just for the world, but for the people of the country. I felt that I wanted them to be able to reflect on it in a way um, that, that they could absorb. So it's through the eyes of a child. During the filming of Lara Croft in Cambodia, Angelina received that experience and impressions that forever changed her worldview and character. Her first child was from Cambodia. She bought a house in the province of Battambang, adjacent to Samlaut National Park in the Cardamom Mountains, and felt she had to make public the problem faced by the people of this wonderful country. More than 10 years ago, Angie purchased 60,000 hectares of the park and turned it into a nature reserve named after her son, the Maddox Jolie Project. On July 31, 2005, Jolie was awarded Cambodian citizenship by King Norodom Sihomoni in recognition of her conservation efforts. The project was later expanded and renamed the Maddox Jolie Pitt Foundation to create Asia's first millennium village in line with the United Nations development goals. Angelina helps Cambodia even now. Years later, she was awarded the Jean Herschelt Humanitarian Award at the 2013 Governor's Awards at the Dolby Ballroom, where the Oscars were held. At the awards ceremony, she gave a speech in which she explained why she was involved in humanitarian aid. I have never understood why some people are lucky enough to be born with the chance that I had to have this path in life, and why across the world there's a woman just like me with the same abilities and the same desires, same work ethic and love for her family, who would most likely make better films and better speeches. <laughs> Only she sits in a refugee camp and she has no voice. She worries about what her children will eat, how to keep them safe, and if they'll ever be allowed to return home. In December 2022, Jolie resigned from the post of ambassador but promised to continue to protect refugees. In 2015, she took on the film adaptation of the memoir First They Killed My Father by the writer Long Yung, with whom they developed the film script together. The streaming platform Netflix budgeted the film, and Jolie's son Maddox Jolie Pitt became the film's executive producer. More than 3,000 extras took part in the filming. The film tells the story of a seven-year-old Long during the Khmer Rouge regime in 1975, who is forced to train to be a child soldier while her siblings are sent to labor camps. <laughs> The critics were ecstatic. The film was selected as the Cambodian entry for Best Foreign Language Film at the 90th Academy Awards, but was not nominated due to Jolie's Cambodian citizenship. Nevertheless, the film received the Hollywood Foreign Language Film Award at the Hollywood Film Awards and other nominations. The events of 1975 to 1979, the genocide organized by the Khmer Rouge regime that was in power in Cambodia during that period, led to the decline of the entire Cambodian cinematographic sphere. They killed many actors and directors, and the picture of Jolie showed with its success that new generations of actors and directors have already appeared, and in general, everything can be restored. Jolie's next project will be directing. She's working on the adaptation of the novel Without Blood by writer Alessandro Barrico into a script which she will also produce and direct Salma Hayek and Demian Bashir are already in the project. We will soon see Angelina as an actress, too. We already know about her participation in the biopic of Pablo Lorraine, Maria, 
the story will be about opera singer Maria Callas. Who knows, maybe we'll hear Angie sing. Angelina Jolie never sits idle. It's hard to imagine how she manages to do everything. She tries something new all the time. It can be unusual roles or ambitious directorial projects to make this world kinder and fairer. We are sure that Angelina will please all her fans more than once and will do a lot of good for world peace. Now the life of a talented actress and philanthropist is overshadowed by litigation with Brad Pitt. Angie accused her ex-husband of domestic violence. We tried to objectively and in more detail talk about the reasons and the process of their divorce in another video. Click on the pop-up card and watch the video. There you will find out from which Pitt's bad habits affected their marriage and how Angelina Jolie decided to chide at her ex-husband. Thank you for watching this video to the end. You can like the video so we will know that all our efforts are not in vain. Biographer was with you. See you again.